What's up everybody? My name's Corey. Welcome back to the channel. If it's your first time here, welcome to the channel. So what I'm going to be doing today is I'm actually going to be doing a taste test of a pie mint that I made uh, as well. I guess it's not really a taste test, just a taste presentation. I've already tasted it. I think it's absolutely phenomenal, but I want to drink a little bit on camera. That way I can explain to you guys the flavors that I'm getting from, how I made it, everything like that. I don't think I have my mead notebook in here, but that's fine. Whatever. Um, so I'm going to be trying a pie mint, and I'm also going to be putting together a super easy, super cheap, what I would consider starter mead. Now, I don't suggest making traditional meads as a starter mead. Traditional meads are very particular on how they're made. Every single thing that you put in a traditional mead matters. So to get your head wrapped around brewing, to kind of get the idea of how it works, how it functions, what is supposed to happen. Uh, if something that's not supposed to happen happens, you can learn what's not supposed to happen. So I wanna make a sizer. A sizer is an apple mead. It's a mead made with apple juice. Instead of using water and honey and yeast, you use apple juice, apple juice, honey, and yeast. So with all that being said, if you like what I'm doing here, you like the videos that I'm putting out, you like this kind of content, any of that stuff, you just like me, like the video, subscribe to the channel, make sure you leave a comment in the section down below. If you do subscribe to the channel, make sure that you hit the bell icon so you can get notified whenever I put out new videos. Now, let's, let's get into the meat and potatoes. First things first. Oh yeah, so this is a pie mint that I made. Uh, it is grape juice. I took grape juice and I threw some honey in there and then uh, I let it ferment. And it took about, I want to say it took roughly two months to make, uh, two months from mixing to drinking. And it tastes amazing. Uh, it came out at a lower percentage than I was expecting it to. I was expecting it to pop out at about 12 to 14. It ended up stalling at 10 and wouldn't go past that. Um, I did a whole bunch of uh, like shaking and agitating to try to reactivate the yeast and I got it to process from 8 to 10 but I couldn't get it to go past 10. It just completely stopped. So here it is. 10% uh, and phenomenal. It smells like it smells like the good part of a peanut butter and jelly sandwich it it seriously like i wish that youtube had uh smell vision like in futurama because it's so good so so good it is such like it's got such a prominent grape jelly smell that you can almost smell the peanut butter flavor that's not there just because grape jelly grape jam and peanut butter it's such a like the combination of you're so used to having it together at least i am that when i smell this it smells so much like grape jelly that i can envision the peanut butter as well amazing and it tastes pretty much the same i mean this is 10 percent, and this is something i don't like wines i don't like wines i don't really drink alcohol um i like the way that dark beers taste but I'm not a drinker. I used to be a drinker. I used to drink a lot. Um, I used to have a drinking problem. I used to be what people may consider an alcoholic of sorts. Uh, I wouldn't get out of bed unless somebody brought me some Everclear to drink with my coffee, is what I'm trying to say. So I don't really drink anymore. I started making mead because I don't drink and because I tried mead. I like to drink on very special occasions, once in a blue moon. I'll have a beer, a glass of my own mead. Uh, and it all started because I went to the store and I bought a four pack of Anchor mead. And I cracked it open and I poured it into a glass and I took a drink of it and I was like, this is horrible. How is this? No, 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 I don't know. Mm -mm. Not happening. Nope, this is not this. Nope, this can't be blackberry meat. This tastes like blackberry seltzer with a spritz of vodka in it. No, I don't accept that. I don't accept that this is what meat is supposed to be. So I started looking on YouTube. I found the channel CS Meat and More, which you should definitely check out. Brian and Derica are a phenomenal knowledge base. There's other younger, more uh more millennial youtubers that that make mead that actually put out a lot of videos kind of challenging uh brian and derica's ideas 
it is what it is. I personally prefer Brian and Derica. So with with that out of the way, I'm actually also going to have, I wonder what these lines are on here. I'm going to have a link in the description, like I said, to their channel. You should definitely check it out. If you're looking for a resource, a good, good, solid resource on recipes and how to make meads, definitely give them a shot. God, that's good. That's so good. All right. Let's go over the shopping list that we're going to need. Because like I said, you're going to be making a mead today. There's only two things on this list that you're not going to be able to pick up at Walmart. This bottle itself, you can get at Walmart. The liquid that's inside, you can't really get at Walmart. It is a sanitizer solution. It is a industrial kitchen style, uh, I guess, sanitizer solution. Food grade. So, I mean... You wouldn't want to, but I could technically pop this off and take a sip and it wouldn't do anything. If I drank, you know, a few gulps, I'd probably be pretty not feeling well. Um, but it's food grade. So that means you can have some of it still in your bottles, still on your whatever it may be, your airlock, your uh, uh, whatever, whatever other tools you're using. You may have some on there. It's not that big of a deal. Um... So the link for the solution will be in the description as well as this. This is an airlock. You can get these two for five that come with this. Uh, this is a two-piece thing. Airlock itself. And then this is the, uh, the bung. The bung and the bung hole. Play with the bung hole. Uh, so th this part goes into the top of the jar. This goes into here. To make life easier on yourself, put this in this and then put it in there. Fill this with sanit sanitizer solution, cheap liquor, whatever. I usually just put sanitizer solution in it, and it works great. Uh, so those are the only two things that you can't get at Walmart. What else are we going to be using that you can't get at Walmart? Pure and simple honey. This is the cheapest garbage honey. Um, let's see if we can kind of do it without, like, massive amounts of light. Uh what pure and simple honey okay pure and simple brand honey um fleischmann's active dry yeast active dry yeast and then one bottle this is a 96 fluid ounces so three quart bottle of organic pure what does it say ingredients juice from ripe whole organic apples and azorbic acid so there you go now this is great because it comes with not only the first product that you're going to be processing but it also provides you with a bottle that you can use for your future processes this that I'll have a link for in the description fits just absolutely swimmingly inside this so what's the first thing that we need to do well the first thing that you're gonna to want to do is take your apple juice and shake it up when you get this apple juice there's gonna be a bunch of crusties on the bottom that's just the way that it is anytime you pick up like a green tea or a uh, if you get a beverage shake it up before you open it and take a drink every single time I have a ha I have such a habit of this that even if it's water like let's say this is a bottle of water okay I'm gonna I'm gonna grab the bottle I'm gonna shake it up and then I'm gonna pop the cup like it's just a force of habit I, I do it every time um, so now we are all set up you've got your apple juice nine dollars nine dollars for this bad boy right here do you know how much one of these jars alone costs ten dollars so save yourself a dollar get apple juice with it as well enough honey to process two gallons two gallons uh you're gonna put roughly two and a half into each two and a half pounds into each gallon this says it's five pounds it's not five pounds it's closer to about 2.7 2.8 whatever um and then your fleischmann's uh fleischmann's for that whole container it costs about three dollars so all in all you could process this mead for nine dollars six fifty so that's fifteen fifty we'll say ten cents for the yeast <laughs> fifteen sixty uh two fifty for a reusable airlock and i think twelve dollars for a thing of sanitizer solution that should last you probably about two years uh you don't use the sanitizer by itself you use like a tablespoon or two uh, um, and mix it with a gallon of gallon or two of water so you don't need a lot of it all right let's get 
to mix in. First thing we're going to do, pop open the apple juice, and we're going to pour a bit of it out. So I got this extra cup here. We're just going to pour some of the apple juice into it to make room for the honey. Mm, that's not going to be enough room. Maybe about that. That should be about okay-ish, I hope. Um, now what we do is we turn on our scale. I pulled that much apple juice out. So you're going to pull a fair amount of apple juice out. Turn on the scale. And then we're going we're gonna to pop open the honey. All right, so we got the honey popped open. Now, typically, if you're doing this and you're not using a brand new container, a brand new bottle, sanitize everything. L like, legit sanitize everything. The, the quickest, easiest way to destroy a brew without actively doing anything is not sanitizing. You don't sanitize. It's extremely likely that you will get some type of growth that you don't want so just sanitize this stuff okay now let's hope that this is enough room for the honey we're pouring it in oh oh crap i looked away and got it all over the side that's fine though all right so it's not going to be quite enough space So here's the good thing though. If you end up making it to where it's not out of space, dang, I need to get a towel. It's pouring all over the place. Where it's not out of space, you can just pour a little bit more apple juice out. Uh, I'm at 1.10, which means I am a ways away from having the amount of honey that I want to have in there. Now I don't know exactly where it's at because I poured more water out, but, or apple juice out, but it's fine because I was able to see that I just added six more ounces onto the one point one pound 11 ounces that were already in there, which means I have two pounds and one ounce of honey in this apple juice. Now, there is actually honey that is poured all over the side, so there's gonna be a brief pause um, I am going to run. Actually, is there is there is there a pause button? I don't think there is. All right, got that cleaned up. Had a little bit of a honey over spillage. Got it nice and clean. Haven't done anything else aside from pull a bit of honey and spray some sanitizer on the side of this bottle to try to get as much of it off and then while I was away I also washed my hands of course uh, because now comes the part when I'm gonna actually be touching the stuff that goes in here so just for good measure spray hands with sanitizer because well uh, better safe than sorry take another drink of the pie mint skull good that's so good now this is what we're looking like this is what we have you have apple juice honey okay it's very very simple at this point what we do take lid place lid back on apple juice now while you're doing this make sure your hands are dry uh, it also works to have a towel I will sometimes take this and wrap a towel around the bottom end and put your thumb in there put your thumb in there that way if your hand falls it's you're not gonna lose it and then you basically just yeah, you shake you just shake it up you just shake it all up Every once in a while, you want to stop, crack that open. If there's any air that's in there, you want to let it escape. Because of how full this is, it's going to be a pain. 
But we can't keep doing it, man. I don't work out on meat making days. Just joking. I work out every day. <sighs> you should too. Do some sort of exercise every single day. Whether it's lifting, running, going on a long ass walk, hacky sacking, skateboarding, whatever it is. Making mead. This is, this is the best part. Now that I'm all sweaty, I smell all disgusting. Almost still separated at the bottom. Takes a while. Be prepared to shake a lot. There are some people that use like aquarium purifiers and things of that nature. And I mean, you can if you want to, where you can just not be lazy. Grow some muscles, shake it up. By the time I get done, I'm gonna be glistening with the amount of sweat on me. It's looking good and shooken up. Probably gonna shake it up a little bit more though. I need a break. You can see the glistening, the glistening of the sweat upon thy brow. But no longer separated. It's all one nice, solid, good color. So now we just do a few more moments of shaking. Basically, just to try to make sure that this is as oxygenated as possible. The more oxygen that is in the must, the better it will process out the gate. All right, now let's see how it looks. Who dog? That deserves a reward, huh? Eh? All right, looks like we have a good, solid, mixed musk. No more honey. If you look, you can't really see, but there's no more honey like sticking to the bottom. It looks nice and separated, or not separated. <laughs> nice and not separated anymore. What do we do now? Well, there's a couple different routes that you can go from this point. If you have prepared yourself, your resources, your crafts, what you can do is check the gravity. When you check the gravity, what it's doing is it's telling you how much, how viscous the item is based on the amount of sugar that is in the item. So with mead, with beers, with brews, what it can tell you is it can tell you the potential alcohol content of what you're making. So when I pour this into here, into this little guy with the hydrometer on it, what it's going to do is it's going to give me a idea, a starting point of where it's coming from. Um, basically, it's telling me where it's starting at. And based on the kind of yeast that I use, it allows me to know where it can go to. Because I'm using Fleischmann's, depending on what the starting gravity of this is, it can go up to about 12 to 14% probably. Um, 
but we'll see. There's no guarantee that it can go up to that point until we check. So first thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna pull up the ABV calculator on my phone and see. So let's get this bad boy poured in here. Make sure it's still, oh yeah, it's still good. Pour some in, likely to spill, but that's fine. Oh, freaking arm slipped. All right, a little bit of spillage. Tastes like honey apple juice. All right, so we have this starting out. Dang, that's pretty high. Huh. All right, so this is going to start out at a 1.13. And, whoo wee it's going to come out really sweet probably. Yeah, actually. This should come out as a moderately sweet dessert apple sizer. Um, because of the kind of yeast that it has, it should stop at around, like I said, between 12 and 14%. Stopping at between 12 and 14%. We'll put this at a 1.02, 1.03 final product, which means it will still be a moderately sweet dessert wine. So we've got the that poured back in there. Now what we do, since we have the hydrometer, uh, you're gonna typically wanna write this down as, lo as well as the date. Um, now, we're gonna take our Fleischmann's yeast. Now, with this Fleischmann's yeast, you can, if you want to, uh, definitely, 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 take this stuff and put it in water. Put it in water for a little bit, let it kind of activate, it's not necessary though. You don't have to. Um, you can just pour the yeast in there and let it do its thing. Now what I'll typically do is I'll put it in there, give it a nice little a nice little one two to kind of get it mixing up in there, falling down and just getting ready to process everything. Now one thing that that kind of frightened me when I first started this was the idea that it didn't start right away. Like it would be a couple days in, uh, or not a couple days in, but like it would be the next morning and the meat still hadn't started yet. That's completely fine. That's completely normal. Let it do its thing. Give it some time. It may take a couple days. It, I mean, it, it can take up to one or two days before it actually starts pushing the air up out of here. Um, so give it time. When it comes to mead, time heals most wounds. Not all, because that would just be a silly concept to have. Most wounds, time will heal. So, there you go, guys. There's a full-on, super quick, I guess not super quick, easy to make, cheap Walmart sizer. So, like I said, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, like the video, subscribe to the channel, comment on the video, and uh, we'll see you in the next one. I'm out.